and so the race begins. Um, so some of you may have noticed, I think there was a notification that went out to all members of leechess.org. Uh, a new variant has been released, and that variant is called Racing Kings. Basically, the concept is that white wants to get the king to the other side, and black wants to get the king to the other side, and it's a race. The one thing um, that changes the dynamic of this race is that, similar to how actual racing works, you cannot directly attack your opponent. And in this game, what that means is that you cannot check the opposing king. Um... At least I like to think that that's some kind of parallel. And so yeah, whoever gets their king to the uh, opposite side of the board first wins. And since black moves second, he has one additional try, um, whereas white doesn't. So white has to always move to the end of the board first, and black has an additional move to catch up. So in my mind, this game was well tested, it's well balanced. Perhaps the one thing, one criticism I have of it is it doesn't stream so well inside this Leech Us TV portal. Um, and the concern that somebody raised this morning, and I think I agree with it now in a little bit of hindsight, is that it's not clear who's the white player and who's the black player. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could see like squares highlighting the last move made if you have not turned off highlights or you don't have a user style that hides said highlights. Um, but it'd be kind of nice if the players started on the left edge, white on bottom, right on top, and you raced left to right um, instead of bottom to top. But again, that's just hindsight. Hey, Chess Instinct, welcome. Today's stream is focused entirely on racing kings, unless I change my mind, which I probably won't because I've been advocating for this variant to be released for a very long time, and Leechus has released it, and so I just want to cover it. And yeah, I'm just watching a whole bunch of these games. Uh, trying to get a feel for how the variant goes, how to assess race situations, um, whether it's best to race the king, I don't know, diagonally to shoulder, uh, shut out the opposing king, or perhaps it's best to race the king this way. Um, I don't know. But it looks like a fun variant, and I think fun is important in chess. All right, so how do I assess this race situation? Um, white's well, kind of threatening to do this, right? I mean, sure, black's got this diagonal covered uh, and could move up a rook to cut off some additional squares, but kind of looks like white's got this. Uh, white's several tempi ahead of black. So unless black lifts a rook to try to... There we go. All right, so black's changed this dynamic a bit. White needs some piece to block somewhere around here. Um, and yeah, this is where things get interesting in this game. Um, I'm seeing that the king being on the f-file makes it difficult for a blocker to show up on f6. Although said blocker would be immediately captured anyway, so what's the point? Um, but it's fun seeing how the king can indirectly defend its pieces. I'm... hmm. How do you assess this situation? This looks really close. <laughs> uh, apparently you are. Yeah, no. Uh, I think I did that at the end of a previous stream where you and several other people helped attract a lot of people to this channel. Um... you don't want it, that's fine too, but, um, but I'm just saying, like, if people are attracting people to my channel, I do need more moderators in that case. It 
it's a very inexact science about uh, who do you let be your moderators and how does all that stuff work and everybody does it differently. So what are we looking at here? Uh, it really looks like black is winning. Uh, earlier I said it looks like white was very much ahead, but unless white can like blockade on e6 or f6, this is kind of a problem for white. <laughs> Why? What was the point of that doubling? No, Black has got f6 amply covered. The problem is that um, neither rook nor queen can take on f6. So, yeah, no, white's going to be able to advance the king to g6. Um, and for Black's hoping that white's not going to get to advance any further than g6, but we'll see how that goes. Um... I'm not sure if king g6 immediately was better than, say, lifting the queen up to g7 and then playing king g6. These race situations are tricky to assess. And that's where half the fun of this happens. Uh, so you can grab as much material as you want, but at the end of the day, it... In fact, you can't even checkmate in this variant, so you're forced to um, race the king to the other side. So that's all that counts in this variant, is where's your king, and is the king on the opposing side yet? I do not understand rook b8. Rook b8 looks incredibly sketchy. Uh, either black is supremely confident that he can stop any kind of forward movement that white's going to attempt, or black's, I don't know, playing hope chess. Um, so white could play queen g7, or maybe queen g8, but I thought rook c8 would take care of that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that white's got this. Rook c8... Uh, now black three pieces appear to be enough to guard the back rank three are required because the queen can take one of them and you need at least two to completely blockade a rank so we're learning this as we go on I saw that but then I saw like bishop h6 right Oh, oh, that's an important... Oh, wait, I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's very possible white might not be winning this. So now what he's got to try to do is rook g7, rook h7. Uh, that doesn't work. He's got to find some way to break that fortress. Um... Yeah, the queen is not a good piece for capturing pieces, but it's well stationed in the corner. It looks like black's got this, although now black has difficulty advancing his king. Um, still, I think black has less difficulty than white has. Yeah, rook and bishop are not enough to impede a king and a bishop. I don't think. So I think it's going to go something like, uh, yeah, no, king b3, king c3, bishop e3, bishop d4, and then king b4. So the king guards the bishop, and then the bishop can't be taken because that would be check. I think that's what's going to happen. Oh, also bishop b5 does threaten the rook. So never mind these, like, five-move combinations I'm seeing. Um, 
Let's first be careful not to hang stuff. Um. And meanwhile, White's trying to find a way to... Actually, if you could play... If you could somehow... No. Wait, maybe. Let's just say if you could get the one of his pieces to e8 and the other pieces to support it maybe he's got something here uh that bishop's gonna check the king that's gonna be a problem so okay now the bishop's free rook takes bishop and now white can resign black's not gonna lift either of his pieces from the back rank and white has no way to block and break black's blockade. Try saying that three times quickly. Let's see, uh, now bishop takes rook. Or not. Okay. Uh, rook d8. No, I see. Yeah. Yeah, rook c8 would have sufficed as well. Um, king c5. King c6. takes rook king c7 and white's host gg interesting so yeah, if you have three pieces guarding the back rank, that per creates a pretty effective blockade. Okay, so... Oh, wow. We've got a Lee Chess Master playing this. That's pretty impressive. So, I'm going to assume it's his first time playing this, and he's still learning it and getting familiar with it. Uh, queen to d4, maybe? I mean, yeah, he's got to find a way to break the blockade and put his pieces in the way, but um, without giving up his pieces. Rook c7? Oh, yeah, just threaten to take the bishop. Hopefully you have time to do that. Um, okay. I'm not sure that... Oh, right. Pieces on the fourth rank are immune to the queen capture because that would be a check. Um, rook c5. No! Rook c6. There we go. And now black is at least drawing. Um, because how is white going to break the blockade without giving up his queen? Now the key question is, can black make further progress um, faster than white can? I'm not sure that rook c7 is the way to go. Oh my goodness, uh, what happened here? Um, that's not at all how I would have expected that to play out, but in time pressure things can go awry. Okay. Ooh, that's a lot of optimism. Okay, so... Yeah, now white's gonna try to cut black's king off. Oh, no, why not... Why not, like... Okay, I see. C7 is kind of safe-ish. Because queen a7 check can't happen. Whereas if the rook were on c6, queen a7 check would be possible. And GG. I'm pretty sure. Surely white can moves king to the 8th rank somehow. Yeah. Very convincing, very well done. Alright, so... This is racing kings. So the goal is to get your king to the other side. In this case, to the 8th rank. 
Um, you know, I really need to find like a checkerboard CSS style that I could apply to that top rank. I've spent a lot of time looking for one without any success, but if anybody knows where I can find one, that would be appreciated. Um, I'd like to actually replace that whole top rank with just like each square being a 2x2 two two checkerboard or 4x4 four four or 3x3 three three or something that looks like a finish line. Uh, uh, this does not look good for white. Okay, I see. White can actually make a blockade. No, why would it? Okay, fine. I guess that's okay. Um. Go speed race, sir. Go speed race, sir. Okay, but um. Oh, I'm not gonna get to see the end of that. Eh, it's probably gonna end in a time scramble anyhow, but um. <laughs> I've always wondered about this. What's wrong with the symmetry strategy? Other than there's only one queen and only one king. So you'd have to stop the symmetry if either the king or the queen moves. But it seems like anything else that was made a symmetric reply could be made to it. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Actually, yeah. I am misunderstanding. So although the bishops and the knights have a difficult time um, capturing one another, just given the way the bishops and knights move, like, you'd never have the knight on e2. Well, maybe you could. Just to say, you'd never have it capture the knight on d2. Um, just trying to think of any way. Yeah, no. So if black plays moves that are symmetric to whites, um, uh, bishop takes bishop and knight takes knight aren't going to pose problems for symmetry's sake. The only thing that can break the symmetry are either the rooks or the queen or the king. But I haven't seen a lot of aggressive diagonal moving kings. So I'm thinking that, um, yeah, in terms of just breaking symmetry from the start position, a player needs to do a rook move or a king move or a queen move. Um, because if you move the dark square bishop, if white moves the dark square bishop, black can move the light square bishop, and symmetry will be um, kept. If white moves the knight, black moves the knight, again, keeping symmetry. Um, so the only way to break this symmetry from the left side of the board to the right is to move a rook or a queen. And that's where things get interesting. Um, <laughs> very much looks like white's ahead here. Uh, if I were black, I'd be tempted to play king b3, aiming to play rook a7 next, um, but it's probably not enough to stop the king. Bishop to e4 comes to mind, but then queen takes bishop. Okay, so black's going for something less predictable than what I suggested. Uh, he's probably aiming to move the rook to b7 instead of a7. Okay. I guess the advantage of keeping the king on a2 is that the bishop on g2 is immune. Um, huh. Well, well, well. This is where things get tricky, and I didn't see an answer. Um, I guess you have to play bishop takes queen, right? What else are you going to try? But it just seems that white's got... No, that doesn't work. Um... Hmm... Yeah, that's gonna be great. No, but because king... Because checks cannot happen in this variant. Yeah, no, that's just... Silliness. And okay, here, here we got symmetry going on. And like I said, only a rook move or a queen or a king move can break symmetry. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's not looking good. It's not looking good for black. Um, although g2 is threatened. Like, okay, now g2 could be taken. Followed by, 
Oh, okay, I didn't see that the knight protects that. It's uncommon for me to see moves like bishop takes g2 and knight takes g2. Uh, so you have to forgive me for not recognizing that pattern right away. Um, so, we're looking at black could play rook b5. Yep, and he does. And the kings just keep running and running. And no, move the move the knight, dude. If you moved to the knight, the queen and the bishop would have covered everything. You didn't need to move the queen to the sixth. Um, still, black is tied up in knots and really can't do anything. So I guess maybe queen h6 at the cost of a few tempi is actually the best move because it stops the king from going to a6 altogether. So, yeah, obviously the value of a knight sharply declines throughout the course of the game. Um, unless you have some specific positions where there's not very much material and a king and a knight can break through a fortress, whereas like a king and a bishop might hit more difficulty doing so. Um, Man, what a tricky variant. So what else? Does anybody have any questions about this variant? Yeah, I just see a hanging queen there, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I would never, ever hang my queen in that manner. Um, okay, what is this? <laughs> rook g4, rook b4, rook g5, rook b5. He's got to have some plan here, right? Well, I was going to say rook g6, rook b6, and then knight, e, knight d4 or something. Uh, well... Oh, this is half second chess. Never mind. I didn't see that there was a lag there. Or this half minute chess. He's probably pre moving a lot of things and just missed stuff. It's pretty crazy. Um So congratulations to the winner, I guess. Yeah, that knight takes F one looks really strong. I like that. Knight takes bishop seems like a very strong move in the opening. Um, wow. Okay. Yep, and I just have to run the king and take it. There we go. Yeah, as say, you have to run your king and hope that white cannot effectively blockade. Oh, so the goal here is to just get your king to the other side with one extra rule that you cannot check your opponent. Let me see if I could link you to the rules and make a command to help people in the future um, get access to the rules. So... Um, 
custom commands. Ah. I know. Well, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... Um... Actually don't need that command. And let me go add a command. This new command is going to be exclamation point race. Uh, I've actually used that word race in many contexts here. So I'm going to call this racing. Um, and let me go to Leech Us's page. Actually, here's the link. Right? This is the rule set? Yeah. Here we go. So now, if you want to know more about the rules, here you go. Um, let me go grab the quick description of this also, just in case people still have further questions about it. Um, so the description they use here for Racing Kings is race to the 8th rank to win. Okay. Edit said command. Race to the A. Can I spell eighth? Yeah. There we go. Copy. Apparently, I cannot edit the command. So, let's see, does this work yet? No. Okay. Well, to fix my Nightbot command, I've got to delete it and re-add it. No big deal. There we go. And now if I say exclamation point racing, there we go. This explains the, the rules uh, in some detail. The uh, detail it leaves out that I probably should have mentioned is that you cannot check the opposing king. King takes bishop. GG. Uh, yeah, bishop takes rook was probably necessary there. Although I don't know if it would have been good enough. But now we'll never know. Certainly, having the queen on this board makes the game confusing. If you were to play this game without a queen, this would be a lot simpler. Possibly even solved. But, um, the addition of the queen and its ability to just jump to the 8th rank and cover both laterally and diagonally is pretty intense. Um, one reason I haven't yet stepped up and actually started playing this variant is that I know, like, every single opportunity I'd be trying to check uh, my opponent and um, like we trying to take all my pieces that the king defends and forgetting about the check rule so I'm just watching some games to warm up to the idea that you know checks aren't possible and because of that tactics are very strange and fun like you'll have situations where say okay that rook on f5 cannot take the queen but maybe some other white piece could somehow take the queen. Like if there were a knight or a bishop attacking the queen, that could take it, but the rook can't. You don't see that in any other variant where a piece threatened by multiple pieces can only be taken a certain way um, because the game rules forbid otherwise. Um, 
you'll see cases where like where there's pinned pieces, but this introduces something that's not a pin. It's introducing like the you actually kind of want to pin or get attacked in a way that your pieces can't be taken. Um, which is pretty hilarious because in normal chess you would be trying not to get your pieces pinned. In this variant, you try to pin your pieces a lot just to get your king moving forward, and in some cases to just make your pieces immune to capture um, in various ways. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, now this is absolutely counterintuitive. No question. But isn't that some of the fun of this? Um, anyhow, if people have questions about like strategy of racing kings or ideas for it, uh, feel free to speak up, else I might get some food ready and then maybe come back and play some of this and just leave the stream going in the meantime and be here in case there are questions. Um, so, yeah, let me know, ask away, I'll do what I can to answer. But yeah, these race conditions are pretty hilarious. Um, okay, so who's winning this? I want to know. It sure looks like white's ahead. If it were white's move, you'd probably play king g7, and then on rook c8, rook f8, oh. We're not going to get to see the end of that. That's too bad. Just when it was getting fun, too. But hey, we've got Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, that gives me some thoughts, too. Oh, there are some ways I might tweak the Lee Chess TV a little bit if I had control of it. Um, I'll have to give more thought and see if there's any way I can improve upon it without reducing what's already there. Ha! Huh. Who knew that Mozart played chess? Not me. Not I. Alright, I'll be around. If you guys ask questions, I'll answer them, but I need to get some food ready.
right, so how's everybody doing? Is everybody enjoying this? Hey, what's up? Sorry I was AFK for a little bit. Um, I see no questions were asked, so there's really not a whole lot for me to answer at the moment. Um, so with that, let me get back to the show. Um, what's going on in this game? Rook takes Rook, and the Queen cannot take it. Um, the Queen and Bishop team up to protect against a King invasion. Right? Namely, this Queen and this Bishop prevent Black from moving forward. And I'm kind of surprised Black isn't doing something about it. But I guess Black's also trying to deal with uh, White's idea. Okay, so, all right, and white's cutting off across this rank. Uh, wait, why does that arrow go that entire length? Um, all right. Yep, white's definitely trying to cut uh, off black. Oh, white lost his rook. That's not good. So, yeah, this covers the most immediate threat. Um, Black needs to get a knight to take the queen. And I'm not sure what white's up to. Probably trying to play bishop g8, right? White resigned. Oh, right, because, yeah, Black had just moved there. I knew that. So, okay, grabbing that rank is pretty important. Because um, the first to grab it with the queen, um, assuming there's no rook to oppose the queen, the queen just takes the rank. So, next question is, what's a good way to blockade against that sort of thing? Uh, no, it looks like black's just messed up, right? Unless I've missed something, black is not winning this. Not anywhere close. Yeah. Black must have missed something. So putting a piece in the way of your rooks is not a good strategy. Unless you immediately get that piece out of the way of the rooks so they can develop. Rooks seem to be really vital to how this game advances. Alright, so king h5, and then king g... Oh, wait, what? Okay. So you still can play king h5. Could start off by just taking... Okay. But why not stop the black king? I guess this game is going too fast for any of the moves to be meaningful. That protects the queen, by the way. Knight takes queen is not possible. And gg. Huh. Well played. Alright. Well, I suppose in a few minutes, unless somebody else starts streaming something, I'm probably myself going to give a go at this game. Um, just because now I'm a little bit more awake and alert. Still hungry. Still need to have my food, but um, we're making progress here. Hmm. 
It's distracted by something that happened in another channel there. Uh, White lost his queen. That's not good. Um, hopefully White's got a plan for getting the king to the other side before Black develops, because as it stands now, White is between a rock and a hard place. Uh, I guess Black's thinking. What is Black thinking about? I mean, okay, this is a good position. There are tons and tons of options. Knight c4 is a legal move. Um, okay, that protects the rook on g2. At least against the rook taking it. But bishop, well no, black needs to stop the king from advancing. That slows the king. Actually, yeah, taking an f4 is pretty smart. And you could follow up with, like, bishop e3, or... I don't know. Rook takes e1, maybe. Okay, yeah, bishop takes g2, bishop takes rook. Take all the white's pieces and stop the king. It's that sort of position where, actually, this there's some value in coding an AI to help figure out that sort of thing. Um, AI would have a field day playing that. <sighs> you know what that means, guys. I've got to upgrade my Leech Us instance to have this variant. And as time permits, I've got to see if I can code Stockfish to play it. And if I find that Stockfish is just, like, insanely strong at it, then maybe hold off forever on releasing the Stockfish. But, um, I'll have to think a little bit more about this. But, yeah, I should at least upgrade my Lee Chess instance to the latest version so that it can play this, even if I choose not to. Let me start the upgrade. Alright, so let me start my upgrade somehow, somewhere, somewhen, some why. Uh, I'm just going to leave this up and running on the stream and then do all this on my second screen. Um, just so you guys don't have to be bored with the details of what I'm doing. Okay, get status. I have to do a git rebase. I don't remember how any of this works, so... Okay, git rebasing. Okay, some people have varying opinions on git rebase, but um, how do I do this? Okay, git checkout experiment, git rebase master. 
So first I have to pull master to sync it. Um, second I need to get rebase with respect to master. Okie dokie. And another thing that makes this more interesting is that I have to um, somehow sync my git with another git. Um, okay. I'm going to give this a try. Git stash. Git checkout master. Git remote dash v. Git pull upstream master. Okay. Ah, wow, there was a fix just today to address an edge case in uh, Racing Kings. Okay. I'm super curious what that's about. Um, so what did Ornakar fix? He just fixed it today, apparently. Okay. Uh, so I have to go to not Leela, but to Scala Chess. And see, what was this edge case? Oh. Game reconstruction. Uh, Ah, yeah, it's necessary that um, both kings are not in check at the conclusion of a move. That makes sense. Yeah, because you could have some weird en passant. Well, there's no pawns in this variant. So what's the situation where, I don't know, you move a piece and multiple checks might be discovered by either player. I guess you can't move a pinned piece, and you can't put your opponent's king in check, and all kinds of stuff. Um, oh, you can't move your king out of the way to expose a check. That's probably what happened. Alright, so yeah, bishop b3 there makes sense. Um, okay, that's a good catch, though. Oh, right. Uh, git submodule update. Okay. Git push origin master. Okay. Uh, now the git rebase command. Right. So git branch list git check out AI user I think git rebase master alright uh, standard three-way merge successfully applied. Uh, wait, what happened here? So I typed in git rebase master. I might have messed up somehow. Oh, never mind. Okay, I get it. So my commit is not kept in chronologically. So when I do git log, git log does not list things in chronological order. It lists them in commit order, which is okay. 
that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, or at least that could be parsed outside of Git. Um, Um. <laughs> um. Well. Well, well, well. I'm going to get a push conflict uh, because. I change the history, um, and there we go, uh, svt-v, and uh, simple build tools up and running, it's running all my stuff, it's cool. Yeah, no. Oh, get interactive rebase. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I guess if I have if I encounter a problem that requires an interactive rebase, I can do that. Um, but at least now my instance following compilation, it should be able to um, should be able to play Racing Kings and. Then I can worry about the fun of, uh, well, you know, just getting Racing Kings up and running there. Hey, buddy. Uh, you're my 463rd follow. Just random. <laughs> I gotta know more about this. You can't just leave me hanging here, buddy. You, you tell me that you just randomly follow people. And expect me to not be curious. Um, I need to know why is some dude randomly following me. Oh. Okay, I get it. I get it. No, you're. Everybody does their own thing online. Online boundaries are a little bit different than they are in person. But, yeah, I'm not promoting that agenda. So, yeah, feel free to follow me, but whatever. Um, okay, so, uh, hopefully my Leechess instance is going to be up here in a second, and I can test whether or not I have this particular variant. Um, Okay, well, still deploying, testing, compiling, what have you. Uh, in the meantime, I've got this really weird one minute Racing Kings game. No, why would you go that way? Why not King E6? Uh, okay, at least you ended up on F7 either way, but. Um, yeah, take the Queen. Probably win this. Unless you manage to stalemate. Which would be hilarious. I need to know how many Racing Kings games have ended in stalemate. This is an important statistic. This is one of the most vital questions ever asked um, on all of Lee Chess is has a Racing Kings game ended in stalemate? Um, result stalemate. Variant Racing Kings. 15 Racing Kings games have ended in stalemate. Truly, this is the wall of shame. Uh, so I'll just keep that permalink around. Now maybe there's some cases where the stalemate, I don't know. 
It's either deliberate or couldn't be stopped, but I'm gonna guess that most of those are just silly accidents. Uh, and this I call a stalemate in this variant just shameful. Take the queen. Ah, why did you take the queen? There we go. There we go, just keep going. You got this. All right. Meanwhile. Ah, I do have racing kings on my server now. Very good. All right, well, 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 well. Um. No time like the present, I suppose. Is anybody even watching? If nobody's watching, I'll just switch over and start coding. But if people are watching, out of deference to them... Eh. Okay, we got one viewer. I think this one viewer is probably more interested in seeing me code than watching these games. Even though I find these games interesting. Um, it's funny how my mindset's changing. But... I'm somehow suddenly optimistic that I can get this Racing Kings thing done. So, why don't I give it a go? What's the worst that could happen, right? Actually, I could do the coding while you guys are still watching this. That's what we could do. But... Hmm. No, I'm gonna switch into coding mode in just a minute here. Um, that's gonna be the plan. So... Where is my... There is my coding. Let's see. Hopefully my stream still looks... Yep, still shows what it ought to show. It's all good. Um, and, uh, do, do, do. it actually doesn't work so well. Uh, whoops. All right. So, yeah, we've had some fun watching some racing chess. Um, I'm going to switch into coding mode. And in so doing... Um, wait, where did my dashboard go? I lost my dashboard. Uh, let me go add it back. But, yeah, we're going to um, have some fun here. Uh, so, we see how there's a UCI King of the Hill thing. I'm going to add in a UCI Racing King thing. Just largely the same thing if you think about it. Um, um, okay, what Twitch game am I going to call this? I'm going to call this... Um, also, I want to have the link uh, so that'll do and here we're going to call the game uh, I don't know if I want to call it game development or not but people seem to watch game development on Twitch so that's what I'm going to call it and, um, yeah. So here we go. Here's my first initial attempt at developing Racing Kings. Um, so first I'm going to copy everything that says King of the Hill. Uh, at least those. Actually, why don't I grep for this? Um, yeah. We're going to start with make file. So you see how we got all these options for King of the Hill, 3 check, and 
stuff. Um, yeah, racing. I guess that's what I'm going to call this. Um, do I want to call it racing or race? Um, yeah, I think race makes more sense. Three check. It's not three checking. It's race, not racing. It's um, yeah. It's gonna be a noun. So I'm gonna call this race. And maybe I can find some way to genericize King of the Hill to fit within the racing category. I don't know. Um, so we're gonna take a look at material dot h. See what is it that we do for King of the Hill? Okay. And say that if we're dealing with a race, yep, that sounds fine. Um, <laughs> I'm just pretty much going to put <clears throat> going to put King of the Hill and race right after each other, which might mess up some of the numbers that were previously passed around, but that's okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six lines of code. Grab this, copy it. Um, and right now we're just going to say that that works exactly the same way it used to. Uh, that's actually kind of cool. I mean, thought about that. Might deal with some of that later. Okay, and here's our King of the Hill block, 515, through this. So, um, I need to grab this 25-ish lines of code, copy it, and say if we're dealing with a race, um, actually I just want to deal with the K-O-T-H part. Why don't I just put this in insert mode? There we go. I'm going to make sure that all the names are appropriate, or all the methods are appropriately named. Um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, I'll call this the race variant. And right now, that's just going to do exactly the same thing as done for King of the Hill. Um, should probably actually update that comment there. Uh, racing Kings. Uh, okay. Racing Kings. Okay. And um, if def King of the Hill. So yeah, the. I've found those parts of the header files. I filled those in. Um, and now comes the fun part of updating everything else. Where to start, right? Um, let's start with the interface. Uh, so here we need to add in some interface code that says we can play racing chess. Um, what do I want to call this? King race? Race? Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Because maybe there's a way to, to genericize like what piece you're racing into what square. So UCI race seems to be uh, an appropriate name. Um, granted, it doesn't exactly match up with how I did King of the Hill, but King of the Hill was one of my earliest tries, and I wasn't thinking so much at that time about um, just forward what I'm going to do with this. Um, okay. So, and I gotta do the same thing here. Uh, just 
say that by default we're not playing racing chess, even though that would be a fun thing to assume by default now, wouldn't it? Um, okay, so next on the list. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at position.cpp. Technically, I shouldn't even need this check. Um, technically, this should already be addressed. Uh, but, okay, we'll leave this in here. Um, okay, pawns.cpp isn't exactly what we're looking for. Yeah, so next, we've looked at position.cpp. Let me take a look at benchmark. Y4, so this is setting up a position uh, and telling us which variant it is that we're testing with, I guess. Um, and so, right, yeah, this is a benchmark method, that's cool. Probably not going to need that very much. Um, okay, if I remember right, move gen just says that if the game is over, do not keep playing. Do not generate any moves. So that's pretty simple. Um, uh, okay. And yeah, here's the same ish sort of thing that if the game's over, um, don't generate any additional moves because we really, really, really don't need them. Why am I doing this check a few lines above and a few lines below? I'm not sure I understand. Um, yeah, no, this seems redundant. Why do the check first, then identify pinned pieces? Um, this is redundant. Oh, okay, so I remember, yeah. Um, we have to take a look at, uh, let's see how far I differ from the official version, but there was some unnecessary code there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so I'm saying that we don't even need to bother looking for pinned pieces and such if the game's already over. So having identified that, um, I want to go back to that other file where I said uh, there's some code that I definitely don't need, and try removing said code. Is that here? Yes, yeah, pseudo legal. Let's just outright remove this. If zero, do the following, because this should not be necessary, right? Um, this meaning the block of code which says if the game's over, don't do anything. That code should be unnecessary. Um, you know, ooh, we'll leave that be for now. Um, only because I'm suddenly worried that, that would be a bad idea somehow. Um, so I've added the race thing into movegen.cpp. Um, I've already touched benchmark. So what remains is evaluate and material. Um, if I remember right, material.cpp just deals with endgames, right? Um, oops. So if we're dealing with racing kings, um, <laughs> well, that's kind of fun, because we're never going to have any pawns on the board, but anyway, I'm just going to follow the pattern here, saying that, um, just don't worry about endgame tables and stuff. Don't panic, basically. Because, like, every position is going to be a pawnless position. There are no pawns in the start position. 
and it's not possible for pawns to materialize on the board. Cool as that would sound, that's not doable in under the current rule set. All right, and let's take a look at um, okay, eight fifty. This is ten lines of code. So basically all I'm doing is just putting in the game start and end conditions and um, if the game ends then there's really not a whole lot to be said. Okay. Uh, there's not a whole lot to do after the game ends. Okay. We don't have any specialized in-game evaluators, although we might add some at some point. Okay, so we got, um, there's nine of those for Racing Kings, and for King of the Hill, there's 13 of those. So what am I missing? What's in the one list that's not in the other? So you see, benchmark, evaluate, Material, move gen, position, oh, search.cpp. Okay. I'm guessing that searching is going to be largely the same, namely that if the game is over, um, return that you've lost. Uh, let's see, 661, 652, we're going to grab 10 lines and change this and anything else yeah I remember there were four things that we needed to touch here um, again sorry for all the keyboard noises kind of Oh, the keyboard noises kind of sound cool, but they definitely detract from uh, focusing on the actual letters on screen. Um, so, and uh, what have we changed here? So we've added in race as a category, added UCI underscore race. Um, and I just need to make sure that, and I know some of my comments were wrong and I probably should update and fix them. Uh, I removed some dead code, which is just completely redundant. Is, that's a good thing. Um, Defined race and kings, and uh, this is in search.cpp. Okay, I have a comment here. Racing kings is going to be uh, that stuff. Okay, is there anything else I added? Racing Kings, Racing Kings, okay. Um, I think all my comments make sense. The one thing that hasn't been done yet is defining the endgame condition. I mean, yeah, I've put in all the skeleton code and copied it and said this is exactly the king of, same as King of the Hill. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You are absolutely correct that only part of the screen is visible. Um... Hmm, how do I fix that? I guess I need to come back in a minute. Uh, let me come back um, with a different stream resolution and we'll do this properly. I just put in the boilerplate code anyhow, but the actual coding is going to be more interesting. Um, See, so yeah, I'll be back in just a minute. Thanks for letting me know that before I went any further.